Uh, I'm Dr. Bob Burson, one of the uh, co-moderators here, along with Dr. Crazier and Conrad. Uh, welcome, all of you. Uh, the first talk is on, uh, this is an uh, endograph session. The first talk is on next generation uh, endographs. Are they just iterative or transformative? Uh, my disclosures relevant to endograph uh, lectures include relationships with uh, most of the makers of endographs as shown here. Well, we now have six FDA approved uh, EVAR devices here in the United States, and uh, of the six, five will remain. Uh, the Anurex device is being phased out uh, here, uh, I think, this calendar year. Um, but with all these devices, the question becomes, do we need additional endographs? Do they meet our needs? Uh, and are the next generation of devices uh, going to add anything, expand our indications, or simply be iterative and uh, duplicative? Well, what are the limitations of the current devices, even though we have six? Uh, are there limitations? Well, yes. Uh, we still have a difficult time with angulated necks that are greater than 60 degrees, and uh, ones that approach 90 degrees are very difficult for any of these devices to handle. Also, large patchless necks have, uh, have remained a challenge, uh, and those uh, large necks we know, especially if they're large and short-necked, uh, have a high type 1 attachment site endoleak rate. Uh, and then, of course, we have the no-neck or short-neck uh, situations where the current devices really have a difficult time sealing, regardless of diameter. And then uh, difficult access cases where the femoral arteries are six millimeters or under, and then also dealing with uh, iliac aneurysms. So uh, what do the uh, next generation devices offer in terms of solving some of these problems? Well, let's tackle the neck problems first and then go to the access uh, problems second. As far as uh, next generation devices that are novel to address um, neck difficulties, uh, the first one I want to talk about is the Aorfix device. And this one is specifically designed, as you can see uh, in this image, to be extremely flexible and to be able to handle greater than 60 degree necks routinely. And in fact, they had a trial called the Thagoras trial, which was undertaken specifically to look at highly angulated necks between 60 and 90 degrees. They had a lead-in phase that included necks that were less than that for operators to become comfortable with the device. But then the main uh, uh, enrollment in the trial was exclusively highly angulated necks. So we have data on both in this trial. And at one year, with 200 patients enrolled, we have very good outcomes with very low rates of type 1 or 3 endoleak in the highly angulated necks that are not much different in those that have standard angulation, only 2.4% uh, endo type 1 or 3 endoleak rate at one year in the highly angulated necks as compared to 1.6%, so almost no difference.